Hey everybody, in this iClone Basics tutorial, we're gonna get started with a basic scene. I'm gonna show you the basics of iClone, how you can create a beautiful scene like the one we see on the screen right now. I'm just gonna play it back for you real quick. We've got some cool background and some uh, magic effects going on and some animation and all that stuff. Uh, there's a couple of content packs that are involved uh, with the uh, production of this tutorial, so uh, I'll provide a link in the description for those if you wanna check them out on your own time. So let's get started from scratch. I'm gonna go ahead and start a new project. Uh, by going over here and pressing new. And if you want to see the grid on your screen, you can press control G, by the way. Control G will toggle your grid on and off. I'm gonna leave it off in this case. Control F will toggle your information, your scene information on and off in the top left there. And control A will toggle your scene route on and off. I'm just gonna leave everything blank right now and we're gonna start absolutely from scratch. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a character. Okay, that uh, model character that you saw earlier. So we're going to go to our actor tab up here and go over to uh, the female character. I'm just going to double click. And when you double click a character or a prop, it'll add it to the middle of your scene, the scene root, which is where you saw that access before. Okay, now you can see that uh, it seems like the uh, character is kind of glowing right here. And this is because your default iClone project contains HDR. So if I go over here to my visual tab, and I go up a little bit here. We can see an HDR section right here. The HDR effect is currently on. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that for now, okay, since we're not gonna focus on HDR in this tutorial. Okay, so our character's on the screen. That's how you can add characters. Let's go ahead and add a couple of props to our scene as well. So I'm gonna go over here to my uh, content tab one more time and go over here to my set tab. And under set, I'm just gonna go back to the basic uh, root folder here and you'll find all these uh, folders here like particle, props, sky, and everything like that. Let's just go into the uh, props folder right here, and I'm gonna add a couple of props. Now these are from the uh, displacement uh, elements pack I mentioned before at the beginning of this tutorial. And again, the link for the for this pack is in the description below. Uh, so I'm gonna go here to my Greco-Roman uh, um, folder, and then to, uh, I'm just gonna throw a couple of columns in here, okay? A couple of pillars. This is the first thing that we're gonna bring into our scene. Okay, so I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. And you can also click and drag your, your uh, objects onto the scene as well, which I'm gonna do in the case of this pillar, all right? So there you go, we got a big uh, white pillar and I can just move it around using my gizmo here as well. If you don't have your gizmo on the screen, you can press Control Q and that'll toggle your gizmo on and off. But it's highly recommended to have that, okay? And if you wanna create like multiple uh, copies of the same prop, what you can do is you can just hold the Control key and you can click and drag and create multiple copies. I'm gonna create like uh, maybe four pillars surrounding our character like this. Okay, we're just gonna kind of make it look uh, mysterious and magical and dramatic and stuff like that, okay? So once those pillars are in, I'm also gonna create a floor in my scene. So the floor creation is very easy. You can go up to create and under primitive shape, you'll find a floor, okay? That just creates a floor that basically catches shadows. And there's a, a shadow catching dummy on the floor there as well. If you press control D, you can see your dummies turn on and off, okay? Control D, dummy on, Control D, dummy off. And we talk more about dummies in other tutorials, but basically it's just there to catch the shadows in your scene, which you can see on the ground there. Okay, so we got that uh, ground set up. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna apply a material to our ground. Uh, to do that, we can go over here to our media tab, okay? And under media, we can find a number of different uh, embedded substance materials you can see uh, that come with iClone. And there is one called ground blend, all right? Uh, you can just go ahead and click and drag that ground blend onto the ground right there, and boom, there you go. You got a nice looking uh, ground, uh, kind of stony kind of ground mixed with a bit of grass and moss and stuff there as well. Okay, so that's a really quick and easy way to get your basic scene set up. Uh, what we also want to do here is let's go ahead and throw in some trees, some vegetation, and all that stuff to make it look a bit more uh, populated. Uh, so to do that, we're going to go over here to our uh, set tab one more time. I'm going to go back to the main prop folder and actually rather to the main set uh, folder here. And in set, you'll find a tree folder. And in the tree, you'll find a number of different embedded uh, speed tree assets here that you can bring into your scene. So let's go ahead and bring a couple of uh, patches of rough grass into our scene here. So I'm just going to click and drag and bring one patch of rough grass in there. And you'll notice that when you bring that in, it's selected and on the right in your modify panel, you'll see that your um, uh, elements or your uh, parameters here will change. Now you can go ahead and you know uh, control click and drag like I showed you before to copy this rough grass as many times as you want, or you can just go ahead and select start gardening 
And you can set the area that you want to populate with, uh, you know, random patches of grass. So I'm going to actually increase that area to about, uh, you know, 1,200 or maybe a little, a little around 1,000 or something like that. And you can see not really enough uh, grass right there for my liking. So let's go ahead and increase the number of grass uh, sprouts or whatever, maybe even up to 20 or something like that. And we just want to like randomly place them in our scene, just like that. Okay. So, and then right click to uh, remove that. And you can just click up here to stop start gardening. Or if you want to cut your grass down, cut certain parts, you can use the feller tool. Make sure you're not uh, feller, not planter. And then uh, change the size of your uh, area there. And you can just pan. Let's see, for example, I want to remove this little patch of grass over here. Just click there and it has been filled. Okay. And same thing goes for the trees. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select a couple, throw a couple of Alaskan cedar trees here. All right. And we'll just kind of throw those a little, a little bit further into the background there. Just click and drag one over here and use that same uh, gardening um, there. And of course, we want the planter, not the uh, feller. Increase the size. Just to put a couple of trees behind our uh, uh, scene right there. Actually increase the size a little bit there. And decrease the numbers. Since the trees are fairly large, we can just uh, throw a bunch of trees in there. Something like... Uh, Something like that. I think that'll be fine. Okay. And then right click. And, you know, maybe we want to move our uh, ground up a little bit as well. I click over here to stop the gardening. So I'm going to uh, press the Q key and select our ground. Press the W hotkey. And that'll bring up our movement gizmo. And we can move it a little bit further up on the Y axis just like this. Okay. Uh, we don't need to worry about anything in front of the camera right here because we're just going to basically be going at about this is our maximum distance that we're going to be going away so this is going to be uh, our maximum distance away from uh, our the subject of our scene and i'll talk about camera animation in just a moment now last but not least to add to our scene here i'm going to throw in a sky so the skies you can find in the uh, set section over here and under sky there's a number of different skies you can throw in i'm just going to throw in this night sky and we can just double click and add it to our scene it automatically adds like this. Now you can see we have the kind of creepy looking uh, sky in the background. All right. Let's take a look now at the animation before we move on to the lighting and scene beautification and all that stuff. Okay. So animation, very simple. For our character, I'm just going to select the character and go over here to my motion tab, animation tab rather. Okay. And we'll go back to the main folder here. And in the animation tab, uh, these motions that I'm about to apply, or this motion that I'm about to apply to our character, can be found in the uh, Magic uh, Motion Pack, which I'll provide a link in the description as well. Uh, but to find it, go into the Motion folder right here. And a little bit further down, closer to the bottom here, we have a uh, Studio MoCap Magical Moves folder. Okay, This is a, a content pack available for separate purchase. Just keep that in mind. And I'm going to use it in this Defense folder. There's a number of different uh, magical casting motions right here. Now, if you have your character selected, you can simply just double click the motion that you want to apply and it'll apply it to the character. And if you want to uh, see the motion played back, just go ahead and press the space key or press play down here. And there's our little magical whippity doop. All right. And we're going to have her shooting electricity out of her wand in just a moment there. Okay, but before I get to that, let's go ahead and add a staff or a uh, wand into her hand, okay? Uh, to create a wand, I'm just going to create one from scratch. I'm going to go up here to create and primitive shape and select a cylinder. All right, so we have this big cylinder. We're going to turn it into a wand by pressing the R hotkey, which is our scale gizmo. And then we can scale it down like this by clicking and dragging on that yellow box right there is as thin as we want it to be. And then click and drag up on the blue uh axis right there the blue z axis and you know we can probably make our wand about that size i don't think we have to worry too much about the size of the wand all right and let's go ahead and with the wand selected i'm going to press the w hotkey now and we're going to bring it up to our character's hand and what we need to do is we need to attach it to our character's hand so i'm going to press the e hotkey to rotate it slightly something like this and then w toggle the movement again and Try and place it, you know, somewhere in the in our character's hand. We have to rotate the camera a few times just to find out the position that we want it to be in. So we'll click it over here, and it looks like we placed it in the in the hand right there. And I think that'll work just fine. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to attach the uh, wand to our character's hand. All right. 
So I'm going to right click on the wand and just select attach. And I'm going to select attach here and just select the character's hand. Okay. And you can see then over here, if we have the uh, wand selected, we can go down here and you can see attach. It's attached to our character's hand. Okay. And now if we uh, play back, you can see the wand will move along with our character's hand just like that. Pretty cool stuff. Okay. So we don't need to worry about anything else. We have the wand attached. Let's take a look at a basic camera movement now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a camera by going up here to create and create a camera. Okay. And you'll see a camera will appear here in our camera list before we write the preview camera, but you can go to camera right here. And if you want to, you know, use your preview camera, uh, you can move it around like this. For example, let's just, uh, you know, move it somewhere over here. And if you press the F8 hotkey, that'll uh, bring up your mini viewport. Okay. And your mini viewport, you can change. Oops. You can just, you can dock it there if you want. I don't really want to do that in this case. Uh, you can also resize it as well. You can change the camera view to whatever you want. So this is the actual camera view. And you can see we can separately move our preview camera and the camera, which is physically right there, will remain in the same position in the mini viewport if you want to use that. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and close that down. We don't need to worry about that right now. And I'm going to change to my camera view. And let's go ahead and start at a nice close-up like this. Okay, something like this. Uh, select our character and uh, focus on something like this, for example. Okay, nice uh, mid-close shot. And press play. And gradually throughout her like magical, you know, whatever it is there, <laughs> dance, we'll just go ahead and pause it right there after she's finished. And we'll move out to like a, maybe about a distance like this and slightly to the side as well. Okay. So maybe a position like this will be fine. And, uh, we want to, you know, see the, uh, lightning shoot off into the sky. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, if I press F3, I can enter into my timeline here and to find your cameras, you can go up here to your, uh, track list and you can just go ahead and select your camera. And I'm going to close down everything else, including my project and my motion dummy. Okay, which is the female character right here. And you can see in the camera, if we twirl that down over here and we go to transform, there are two keyframes and those are two different positions. So just like this. Okay. And if we want that uh, camera to be a little bit earlier, we can move it up further like this and it'll just move a bit faster from one position to the next. Okay. And I think that, uh, looks just fine. Very simple camera movement. Again, you can just click and drag left click and drag in the timeline up here to scrub through just like this. Okay. So I think the next thing we're going to talk about is the, so the lighting comes first. So what I'm going to do first is go to my scene tab here and we're going to minimize all these, uh, sections over here. And I'm going to go ahead to my lights and disable my key and rim lights by clicking on them like this. And you can see that actually the scene is still lit up. Uh, for this, I'm actually going to go into preview camera mode because I don't want to have any recording uh, of my camera position. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can adjust the lighting a little bit. Let's go to our visual tab here. And in the visual tab, closer to the bottom, you'll have an IBL, image-based lighting. And if you just double-click this uh, image right here, you can switch this image out for another one. I'm going to choose this King King's Lynn Street image right here. This is embedded with iClone. And you can see the lighting results, the atmospheric environmental lighting is a lot dimmer and a lot more suitable for this, you know, evening scene in the forest, okay? I'm actually going to select this camera and make it invisible as well. Go to my scene tab here and make that invisible. Back to the visual tab here. Now you can adjust the strength of this IBL, okay? And you can get results like this. Nothing will be completely pitch black, okay? You'll only see the sky. But uh, if you have something like this, we can, you know, really emphasize the amount of light. Um, but I'm, for this particular scene, I want to keep it fairly low, okay? Maybe like a value of uh, 10 or 13 or something like that, okay? Maybe 7, okay? It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to only use one single directional light and we're going to have it coming from the direction of the moon, which is right up there. Okay. So that's coming from behind our character. So let's go to our uh, scene manager, select our key light, and you can also use the forward slash key. Okay. Uh, make sure you do this at frame zero. Okay. You don't want to animate your light. Uh, we actually accidentally uh, did that for our uh, strength for our IBL. So if you do that at a different frame, you can press F3 and go into your timeline and just go ahead and under project, you will find right here, you'll find the IBL uh, strength, okay, right there. And just go ahead and click and drag that 
keyframe from the very beginning. Okay, that way it'll be the same throughout the duration of the project. Okay, and we'll do the same thing for our light at scene one. Select the key light and enable it this time. And we're going to use the forward slash key and we're going to change the direction to behind our character just like this. You can see it gets much more mysterious and kind of the silhouette, uh, just uh, lighting on our, our character's shoulders there from the moon from behind there. Okay, we'll just try and make it a little bit more accurate. Forward slash, there you go, maybe something like that will be fine. Okay, looking pretty cool and mysterious there. Let's focus on our character. And the last thing we want to do is add the particle effects. Let's go ahead and close this down now. And I'm going to add some particle effects to my scene. I'm going to go to the content tab and back to the set tab over here and back to our main set folder here and into particles. And under particle, you'll find a lot of different particle effects. I'm going to use a couple from our popcorn effects library 40 here. Okay, I'm going to go into there and into weapons and explosives. There's a couple of things like burning flame and all that stuff. I'm going to use this torch fire. I'm going to click and drag it into my scene here and place it right here. If you want to simulate an effect uh, from the popcorn effects library, you can press the shift S hotkey. And you can see that it creates a nice atmospheric torch light at that point in our scene there. Okay, pretty cool. Let's go ahead and press shift S to uh, undo that, or end the simulation rather. And let's make the dummy invisible by going over here and just making it invisible. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add that lightning effect to my character's wand there. So let's go ahead and back into the popcorn effects library. There's a magic folder as well. And in this magic folder, I'm going to use this lightning attack, okay, uh, which is pretty cool, or this column thunder rather. Okay, let's go ahead and use the column thunder. I'm going to click and drag it into my scene. And I want to align this to my character's wand. Now, the easiest way to do that is just go, go ahead and use this tool right here. Uh, you can also use a control L hotkey to select that and select the wand and align it to the X, Y, and Z axis, and maybe to the center, something like that will be fine. Okay, press OK. And you can see it's aligned basically to the center of our uh, wand. It looks more like a baton there, but we'll go ahead and press the E hotkey to rotate it slightly. Okay, just like this. And a W hotkey to bring it up a little bit to the end there. And we're good to go. Again, we're going to make this invisible a little bit later, so don't worry about that. But let's go ahead and attach this to our wand as well. I'm going to right click it and select attach and attach it to my wand. Okay. And you can see it also attaches to the hand as well. If we go down here, we can see attached to the hand because the wand is also attached to the hand. And if we move it around, there you go. Okay, but we don't want the lightning to come off just yet. So let's go ahead and use our popcorn effects tab over here. And I'm going to go up to the very top and turn my emit off. Okay, we only want it to start emitting once the wand is up in the air. Okay, so let's go ahead and play back like this. That's our little like twirly do thing. And then boop, right about there is where we want to uh, have the lightning emit from the wand. So let's go ahead and press on at that point. And then zhoo, you can see it shoots off. And then maybe when she brings it down like this, we'll turn it back off. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a kind of bird's eye view on this uh, magic effect for now. There you go. Very mystical and mysterious. Shooting off lightning into the sky. All right, pretty cool stuff. So if I just go ahead and make that invisible, just like all the other things, go to the very beginning there to my scene, make the uh, particle. Oh, it's actually part of the uh, character. So under the character, you'll find it once you attach it. Just make it invisible like that. And let's go ahead and switch to our camera view and play back. All right, so that's really about all I want to show you guys in this tutorial. Uh, thanks so much for watching. How You can really quickly create a cool looking scene like that uh, in no time, in less than 20 minutes. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot and make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and I hope to see you in the next video.